the Hall of Justice. You know, I thought that when I started interning for the Super Friends, it would be way more exciting than sweeping floors. Robin, get your gear on and meet me at Lex Luthor's lair. Batman, Superman, and Aquaman have been captured. I'm not Robin. I'm MC Popsicle. I'm your intern for the summer. What? I expressly told Robin to wait at the Hall of Justice. That's it. He is fired. MC Popsicle, you are now Robin. <laughs> no, I can't be Robin. I don't have any powers. Uh, neither did Robin. Oh, yeah. You're right. Um, I still don't want to do that because I'll get beat to death, so no thank you. If you do this, I will go on a date with you. Holy burrito, Wonder Woman! I'm gonna defeat Lex Luthor down to his very last cell! What's up, party people? It's your boy, MC Popsicle, and welcome to Weird Interviews. It's your boy, MC Popsicle. I mean, Robin. And today, we have a very special guest, Shannon Farnon. She was the very first actress to play Wonder Woman ever. She played Wonder Woman in Super Friends and many, many other shows. I'm so excited to speak with her, Shannon Farnon. But before we do that, I wanted to give a shout out to Designs by Galarza. That's our sponsor for this week and they make all my cool MC Popsicle hats. They make all this cool embroidery stuff. So make sure to hit them up. You can get an MC Popsicle hat or basically anything you can imagine. So make sure to follow them on Instagram right here. Okay, back to the show. Well, thank you so, so much for coming on today, Miss Shannon. I really appreciate you being here. It's my pleasure. So, you are the original Wonder Woman. First I one. The original voice. That is so crazy. I and did you that were... for 10 years, starting in 1973, and um, did it many times afterward in promos and uh, different ads for uh, the, uh, it moved, Hanna-Barbera then became, um, it was bought by, oh, come on, Come on with it, Shannon, where are you? Uh, it was bought by, um, was it DC or Warner Brothers? And it kind of kept floating around, but now of course it's been on forever. So it was, it's been kind of a, a life of its own through all these years. Yes, and it has gotten so, so huge. <laughs> it only took 50 years for them to make a superhero movie with her. Well, it did really, really well. Yeah, yeah. I especially liked the first one. Yeah, me too. That was a very, very good movie. What's yeah. that like to see that for you? Well, it was very exciting. I went to the premiere in L.A. And um, I was just so thrilled that after all this time, somebody made a movie about the female superhero that had been flying in transparent planes for all these years. Yeah, it was so good. I thought it was really well casted and a really good movie. Yeah, it took me a while to, I guess the word is accept the costume. Because you didn't like it? Uh, it's not that I didn't like it. But let's keep in mind that, that Wonder Woman was an iconic American superhero. 
Right. You don't you don't see them changing Superman's outfit, do you? Right. Right. So I felt that that should always be a part of who she is, and they changed it. Yeah. I I, say, they didn't ask me, Josh. They simply didn't ask me. Well, they should have. I would have had you on as a, like a, what's that called? Council of some sort. Yes, I said the same thing. And there are, of course, other women that followed me doing the voices for various Wonder Woman parts. We should have all been in the the um, the uh, Themyscira land of the wisdom women and the other Amazons, and it would have been a kick. And they and they would have gotten a lot of mileage on it with advertising. I agree. Yeah, they should have had you guys doing the promotions and all kinds of stuff. That would have yes, been really I, cool. Of course, I could have been her grandmother in the movie. You know, who knows? Yeah, that would have been awesome. It would have. Hey, how, how did you get involved with the Super Friends? Well, I was lucky. That's all I can explain it. I mean, that's how I can sum it up. But I worked with the director on a live action commercial. We did a Flintstone vitamin commercial. I read that. Anna Barbera did it. And I was just a mom and I got to know the director on the shoot and liked him right away. I thought he was very sharp. That was Wally Burr. And I just got a phone call one day from my agent saying, they want to see you at Hanna-Barbera to audition for the role of Wonder Woman. I said, oh, right, right. Of course they do. What? <laughs> and so they said, I, I said, okay. I mean, I'm, you know, every girl's dream. When I was a child, Wonder Woman was the superhero for girls and boys. So uh, I went and had absolutely no expectations, but of course recognized Wally Burr the minute I got there and was delighted that he wanted to give, give it a shot with me. So we worked on it together in the, do, doing the material in the sound booth. And, you know, one minute he'd say, well, let's have her a little, a little more butch. Let's have her uh, take off the shirtwaist dress and put on your boots, you know. So we got to where we both felt like this was, this was who she was in our estimation. And he sent it to the network and the network bought it. Wow. That's, that's just, crazy. That's just as fast as it happened. What a good deal for you. Oh, that's and, so and I worked with such talented voice actors. Oh my goodness. And some of them were also screen actors like I was. So, I mean, it was more fun than you can imagine because people who are totally free and we basically were other than Wally's direction was very specific. But people who are totally free, knowing their their physical persona is not up there and creating this lovely little animation thing, regardless of what it was. And you didn't just do one voice, but you had a major voice or some right. of us did. And the freedom it gives you and the creativity level it can lift you to is just magic. Yeah. That, it, there. You hit on like four things that I wanted to talk to you about Go for specifically. It. <laughs> so were were you familiar with the comic? So you were you knew about it oh, a sure. lot or a little? No, or, well, as I said, that was the comic book for girls at the time, as far as superhero comics went, and there were a lot of them: Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman. You know. Uh, as much as I read comics, and I read my fair share, I wasn't a fanatic, but yes, I was very familiar with her. As, of course, after I started voicing her, and during that time, I did a lot of research and come down the line. I started maybe four or five years ago, appearing occasionally at comic conventions. Who do I meet? The granddaughter of the creator. Ooh, that's another thing I was gonna talk to you about also. 
He's an interesting character. Woo, yes. William Moulton Marston. Let's say he was a man ahead of his time. Yeah, he did all kinds of stuff. Yeah. A bunch of crazy stuff. He was a, a psychologist and he worked on the prototype for the polygraph test. Yes, he did. Where do you think the lasso comes from? Yeah, the, oh. That's the golden lasso. When she whips that lasso out and grabs somebody, they are forced to tell the truth. I did not put that together. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, I guess he was... Go sorry. Ahead. I guess he was just a super genius, it yeah. seems like. Yes, and um, one of the women, I forget off the top of my head, but his wife or the other woman was the prototype for Wonder Woman. Hmm. So he, uh, he had an interesting young man's life, we'll say. Yeah, that was, yeah, very interesting because I was reading about you and then I kind of got sidetracked about him for a little while and I was like, wow. Well, he's led, he led a much more colorful life than I've led. I will give him that. And his granddaughter is just the sweetest woman. She has a huge museum of her own on Wonder Woman in the history. And I happened to just offhand one day at a convention, I think, or maybe it was through Facebook. I said, there's one doll that far surpasses the quality of all the others. And I told her it was the DC creation doll of uh, Wonder Woman. I have it. Would you like to see it? Yes. I love that kind of stuff. I, oh. I have so many figures and stuff like that like i i love that kind of stuff I, my, that's why i leaned in when you're talking about it i was like what is she gonna say Ooh, that's very cool it's so beautifully made so beautifully made this is not going to collapse at all it's just beautifully done and dc made it wow i she love had, that that's she had one and she sent it to me that's really nice. I like that a lot. Yeah, I collect stuff like that. I have comics everywhere and toys and little statues and all kinds of stuff. That's That looks really good. I did a um, video for a young man named John Reddick, who is a collector of Wonder Woman mer mer memorabilia. And we worked together, well, worked together. We did it off the cuff. I showed up and I was treated like royalty and his crew was wonderful. His set was pure white and, and all of this memorabilia was laid out beautifully. And I would enter and tell them who I was, just, as I said, no script, sort of a guideline, and would come down and meet John. And then we would talk about all those things. That 15 minute script is up on my Shannon Shares YouTube channel, but it went, went into the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. Wow, she, that's awesome. Wonder Woman was born the same year I was. Really? Does that tell you something? Perfect. It's have meant, ever, meant to be. Have you ever seen Wonder Woman and I in the same place at the same time? Well, I am right now, but <laughs> <laughs> other than that, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> and that should have been Wonder Woman and, and me. That was a grammatical goof. <laughs> Wow, that's that's so interesting. Yeah, because I was trying to do the math and I was like, could she have spoken to the guy that made the comic? But that didn't work out. The math didn't work out. That was too long ago. Too long ago. Yeah, yeah. But you, so you develop, so there was nobody to base Wonder Woman off of except the comics no. at, at the time. No. So how did you do that? How did you build that character what did you think of her well to... once you grab a hold of what the essence of her is always portrayed and ever shall be i hope it was truth justice fairness honesty and she didn't go around killing people That's she went good. around stopping them you know stopping them from committing atrocities and shaking them up you know pretty good she didn't go around killing people. Well, that, right. that's a huge warrior woman to me. So my original vision of her, even going into the 
Anna Barbera to audition was, this is a warrior woman. And I relate to that. A warrior is a person who gets done. Well, we'll have to correct that line. <laughs> You're okay. <laughs> she had great strength, but she was feminine. This is to make, make no mistakes. She was not this gigantic muscular thing that you've seen overdone in a lot of drawings that came about later. I mean, that's cute and fun, but that was not Wonder Woman. It was not her original intent, nor was it the way she was drawn. Not when I was young and gradually through time. Although mine up in the 70s and 80s was, looked exactly like the doll I showed you. Mm -hmm. But there have been many that were, you know, you pff, way over the top. Right. So I, um... I just had a good, strong sense about her. And I am a strong woman. So when he, director says to me, take off the shirt waist dress and put on your boots, I know exactly what he's talking about. Right, gotta get tough. Get tough, get strong. Still a woman, still feminine. And, and so she has to have that soft side as well. Yeah, that's that's a good balance that like that was done very well. And I feel like that is a hard balance to reach. So that's very interesting how well you could do that. Because that's kind of a so powerful and also I don't want to say like meek, but not not mm -hmm. a show off. Right. You know, Nothing to be I don't know. Nothing to gain by doing any of that in Wonder Woman's mind. Right. Nothing to gain. She was always looking to bring people together to make people have this understanding about what justice and fairness is. So right. you can't do that if you're meek. Right. You can do that if you're strong. And yeah. I, was, I was gifted. I grew up in an uh, entertainment family. And developing your skills was part of, I mean, we all started with piano lessons and baton lessons and tap dance lessons. And you know. Wow. <laughs> so I didn't come at this from a position of weakness. And self-confidence is what that builds when you start young and you learn how to hone all of these arts and crafts. Yeah. Well, you did a very good job. Like, uh, like everybody, as you were the template for everybody else to carry on with this character, because I've noticed that all the Wonder Women, really, that I'm aware of, at least, they're kind of similar to yours. Like, you really hit it out of the park, and it seems like they're like, I'm not going to stray too far from this, because this is the real thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very I've, good. I've met some of the women who have done her voice. And very nice people. Yeah. So yeah. I, I feel very good about the fact that, yes, she's changed with every person who has voiced her, but she, Wonder Woman, has not changed. Right. It's like the same spirit is there. And I thought Gal Gadot did that well also. She did. Because I was wondering how they were going to... If she just had on the right costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sure they'll make another one. Maybe they can fix it. Well, they made a second one, and she's still wearing the same thing. So I think my wishes and hopes are gone on that one. I think that she is the standout of all of those DC movies that have come out, really. I think everybody was like, Wonder Woman is the best character in these movies so far. Now, if you want to have somebody to look up to, what are you going to look up to, the Incredible Hulk? Or Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I don't think the Hulk is <laughs> just go crazy, and blow mean, everything up. <laughs> I like them all. I like them all. They all have their purpose. And Lord knows, one of my favorites was always Batman. Yeah, you know, me too. There was something about Batman, and, and uh, it was pretty spectacular. But he has also shown he, the actors who've chosen to portray him, have also shown. The strength with a tender side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
I feel like that's an easier line to walk, though, than Wonder Woman, because if they get too far out there, then they're like, then the audience is like, that's okay. Yeah, you know, but with Wonder Woman, it's like you got to be very specific and deliberate in your actions, I feel like. And there's another aspect. I don't know if you picked on it, picked up on it. I'm sure you have, if you thought about it. Wonder Woman was never supposed to be a sexual object. Never sexualized. Yeah. Sexy, of course. Feminine, of course. But part of the reason she wasn't created like a gargantuan monkey with no hair was <laughs> because she had all those elements about her. I mean, you know, there was the, the, the relationship, although more gently dealt with early on with the uh, Steve, the, the, the guy in her life. And I mean, that, that's, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. But I think, as I said, mentioned earlier, they've gone too far with some of those drawings and creations of her. Yeah, but leave it up to a bunch of guys <laughs> sitting there <laughs> long enough, you'll come up with something. <laughs> yeah, whenever I see, you know how when we read directions when we get a new product, or I read directions, I should not include you. <laughs> you say, or many times I've said, must have been written by a guy. Or, <laughs> or what a shame they didn't have a woman involved in the creation of that. <laughs> you know? there, yeah. is, there is that yin yang male female thing that really works which is why our governments and everything else should be balanced with that. Men and women, men and women, instead of what has often been the case through time, all men. Yeah, there's a lot of things that it's like, you would think that they would have some women involved, but I'm, I'm shocked by some of the things, like, especially in some media or something, like they would do some female character with no women's input at all. And it's like, you could just ask, you know, just no. <laughs> It's changing and I'm grateful for it and it'll get much better through time. But boy, it's taken a long time. Yeah, well, well I mean, it seems like things are turning around now. Yes, slowly but surely. It's, it's, it's cranking with a very heavy wheel, put it that way. I have another question, so what was it like recording in the when you first started doing super friends what was your day like when you were going to record that's a good question because there were four main characters batman superman wonder woman well there were a little more wonder woman batman robin and then we had the occasional show up of Aquaman and others. We needed a big studio and we had one at Santa Barbara. We could line up, whew, I'm sure we lined, we lined up 10 or 12 microphones standing there at one point or another. Wow. And we would show up and we'd sit at a table with the script, which was always drawn first. You had the layout, the drawing in front of you. Go page by page with the dialogue read it out loud, rehearse it, and you were given your extemporaneous parts. I mean, I was a French scientist, a little boy blade baseball player, lots of things that would get thrown in, but the main character was always first. You'd go through, you'd talk about it, whether this works, that doesn't work, and then you'd break for a snack or whatever, just take a break. Then we'd all go back in and stand in front of these mics and record. Just that simple. So Are you each, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Each session ran generally four hours, sometimes longer. Oh, but well, that got tiresome. There's a rehearsal period at the table and then a break and then you record. Now, if you were working on another gig, because I did other things, I mean, I did on camera all the time. They were very kind about letting you go in by yourself <clears throat> in a booth and just do your stuff. Yeah, well, that's one of the things I was wondering if y'all were actually all together or not. Whenever possible. 
Yeah, that seems like a better environment than just being by yourself. Well, it's like any shoot. If you're going to, and there was some that were, were some, where uh, one in particular, where you had to ask specifically if the other actor would mind throwing me the lines off camera. Most of the time that was just considered courtesy and everybody did it. But bless his heart, um, Dragnet was a, was, a, was a different one. But when you asked him if he would do it, he would do it. So having people together is like being in a play. You know, you go with each other's energy, you take each other's timing and weave it in with what you're thinking of. I mean, it, it's just what makes a scene work. Yeah, it sounds like way harder to do that if you're just sitting by yourself listening to stuff or just sitting there saying things, you know? Yeah, I, yeah. That was another thing. So you were working with Casey Kasem. Yes, he was a lovely guy. Lovely. What was that like? <laughs> well, I got to know him personally. He was very involved in doing fundraising for the Lebanese community mm. and as well as he did his uh, top 40 hit thing. But lovely, lovely man. And the story of his passing is, is not a pretty one, but he was very giving, very generous. And very funny, very subtly funny in person, you know. So it was a pleasure. Yeah, he seemed like a nice guy. And I mean, I love Scooby-Doo and well, you obviously. Know, that's Wally Burr. He does everything. He does all the sounds. He's, wow. He, he is a genius. I'm quite sure on his birth chart it says born a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like a lot of people you're involved with <laughs> might have that. The, um, there are plenty, but he is at the top of the list. He he also, I don't know if he still does it, but he had a stand-up act where he, he was just phenomenal. He could do a gaggle of geese with his voice. Not just a goose, but a gaggle of geese with his voice. So some people are just very special. And, and Michael Bell. Very talented animation voice, and he was a good actor as well, an on camera actor. Wow. The um, work. So, obviously, when you first started doing this, I can't imagine that you would have an idea how big all no. this, or maybe you did. Not a clue. Because it's just taken over, you know, everything. Not a clue. I mean, we would actually work seasonally. Seasonally, we would go in every spring. Spring. They didn't have a contract with us. We could have mm. been available. Wow. Chat, but we could have been unavailable. And then we we just get a call from our agent saying um, they want to start up the season. And uh, can you be there on such and such a date? And, Hell yes. You know? <laughs> but we didn't yeah. know. Have the legs that it's got. That's just fantastic. I mean, to this day, kids can watch it on TV. Yeah. Did you um? Did you feel um? When you started doing the voice and stuff, and started people started knowing about it and stuff like that. What did it feel like to be like, like I'm Wonder Woman to everybody? <laughs> it was a big brain adjustment because I would be invited to do celebrity appearances at, um, well, some of these things were delightful, the Special Olympics events, Special Olympics, oh. Special Olympics are the, the uh, people, the children with the disabilities or we call it, what's it called now? You don't call it disability, challenged, challenged. Mm -hmm. and they didn't know this face and body from the hit a wall, but because the people who brought us in to do this knew what we did, they would promote it. And of course, I of course would add Wonder Woman under my signature on autographs. But that grew and grew to the point where it it got to the point where I that that had to stop, you know, because. There's just, you don't want to overdo that good thing. It was another right. great organization, though, that I was delighted to help out when it, as long as it lasted, and that was Penny Lane, 
where they took in people under the age of 18 that were turning into street kids and gave them a wonderful home. So it was, there's always a good cause. Yeah, that's really good. What are some tips? Say, I have some friends that want to do voice acting. I actually work on that some myself. But what are some tips you would give to people as far as voice acting? You know, that's such a large question. <laughs> Let me try to. <laughs> well, no, I understand where what your thoughts are. But it really is a large question. I mean, I don't believe in just deciding one day, oh, I'm going to be an actor. Oh, well, what have you done to prepare? What's your background? Right. You got to, you know, there are no shortcuts. And, and there's an awful lot of being in the right place at the right time. I would say networking with people who already do that business would be at the top of the list. Find out where they studied. Find out how successful they've been. You know, if you hang out with D students, you're liable to get Ds. Right, that's so, true. You, there just are no shortcuts. A lot of people, because they might have a very nice voice to listen to, think, well, we've got, I've got a great voice for this or that or the other thing, to be a voiceover performer. I wish it was that easy. You know, yeah. I mean, I was a trained performer before I ever did a voiceover job. I started putting myself out there. We made a tape of different voices, different accents. I never even considered animation. Never crossed my mind. Because there are so many people out there that are so talented with that. You know, right. you want me to sound like an alligator? Okay, I'll say, you know. <laughs> yeah. There are, and you know, you do stretch yourself. I stretched myself into a lot of sounds, which was fun, but it's also pretty scary, you know? Right, because then I can be like, what are you doing? Oh, it's <laughs> on your face. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say networking at the top, finding out the people that are successful, accepting the fact that you're going to have a lot of rejection. You will never meet anybody with an audition. You will always have it on tape or some platform. They don't care what you look like, which is good. Other times, and I've had this happen to me, where you can, they'll ask you to copy so-and-so doing such and such cartoon. And I nailed it. Never, yeah. heard, never heard from them. And I was huh. almost an exact duplicate of the original thing they sent me. Hmm. So it's a very unforgiving business. You just take your chances. You throw those darts on the board and you hope they stick. Right. Well, Miss Shannon, it has been very, very great to talk to you. I really, really appreciate it. I, I like you a lot. You're, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. You're very sweet and quick, and it's very nice to talk to you. Okay. And I appreciate all your work. Thank you, and you have my email, and be sure to send me a link of this so I can advertise you on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I definitely will. Okay. You have Take a good day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's about it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to follow the page, MC Popsicles World on Facebook. Also, Miss Shannon, I really, really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Also, check out a word from our sponsor and support your local police. Please check out Ramicus.com for all the MC Popsicle merchandise. We got buttons, shirts, phone cases, posters, everything. So make sure to get on over to Ramicus.com and get you something. Stop! Before you do anything else, check this out. This is a vintage 90s Ninja Turtle figure that was modeled after the turtles from the movie. I love it. And this is a newer turtle figure. I also love it. You should go to the Toy Stash on Instagram and follow them. They have vintage and new toys. And if you're a toy collector like me, you need to know about them. Follow them on Instagram right now. Another thing you need to do is check out Step On It Rugs on Instagram. They are insane. They made me an MC Popsicle rug. Anything you can imagine, they can make a rug for it. Hit them up. Also, shout out to my shoe sponsor, Soulsfing. 
They make amazing future sneakers that are just bananas. Please follow them on Instagram. You will love their selection. And if you're thinking, hey, I want those sunglasses, and I want the sunglasses you wear in your movie Popsicle World, make sure to hit up Filthy Shades. Also, if you live on the Gulf Coast and need help with your pool or hot tub, hit up Emerald Coast Pools. They can fix everything and get you swimming again before you can say Baba Booey.